Hey everybody, welcome back. Today we are going to talk about Clover. The products we have on the shelf here at Northwoods, each one of them has their own specific purpose. Uh, planting date, even region, sandy soil versus good soil, what you should be using in your clover plantings. Uh, one of the things we want to emphasize, we've got a lot of clover plantings here on the shelf. We're going to include chicory in that. They're not all combined in a bag, just like about every other seed company does that. They take every single clover, shove it in a bag, premium price. We don't do that. We understand that northern Michigan is completely different than southern Illinois, Iowa, uh, Vermont, Maine. All these regions are different, and each specific region and soil type may call for a different clover. So we're going to talk about why we don't stuff every single clover into a bag. So let's talk about clovers. Why do we like clovers? Why should it be a part of your food plot program? Right now is a perfect example. Uh, I know here in Michigan, we're just coming off of, uh, it wasn't a very hard winter, but there's a lot of does carrying fawns, getting ready to have fawns. Uh, we're starting to see pictures with bucks developing antlers. They're trying to recover from not only the rut, but a long winter and they need protein okay and i've talked to some wildlife biologists researchers and you know the number varies it could be anywhere from deer can utilize 17 to 20 percent protein uh, in the foods that they consume our clovers that we have tested are anywhere depending on which variety which strain low 20s to low 30 percent protein crude protein so this is plenty of protein for these deer when they need it right now uh, as well as all summer long, you know, does are nursing fawns, bucks are trying to grow antlers. This is a great addition to any food plot program. And I think personally, it's a must have on any hunting property. If you have the space for it, you've got the soils for it. I think clovers are a great addition to any food plot program. Now, the next thing we want to talk about is the hunting plots. We really like clovers in our small secluded hunting plots. That's why we came up with the Seclusion 360 blend. It is my favorite hunting plot planting. If you've got the soils for it, if you've got the sunlight for it, you know, there's a lot of regeneration on these small hunting plots. They could get eaten to the ground quickly. If you try to use a brassica or like uh, our green forage blend, big broadleaf plants where the regen isn't there. Our Seclusion 360, our clover blends, uh, red clover, if you have sandy soil, these make great hunting plots. As long as you can get some sunlight to it, you can come in and maybe do your last mowing in early September and then just stay away. I like the regen with the Seclusion 360. And, you know, we get to watch this out our back door, um, our backyard food plot all the time. We put a, a Seclusion plot off to, uh, it's going to be the east of the main food plot. We get to watch that. And then we get to watch the clover blend plus chicory and the attraction of this clover blend plus chicory the chicory uh, in october is it's uh unbelievable you know i'm not going to go as far as to say it'll attract every buck around it that's just nonsense but it's very attractive and we see a lot of use for this uh, particular strain of chicory we really like the seclusion 360 in hunting plots because of the high percentage of chicory and the clover that's in it and we like the clover blend plus chicory or even the just the straight clover blend on the main destination feed fields but you know, it's with the regeneration, you can go in in uh, late August, early September, and then just stay out of there. It's not like we have to go over seed dry or do anything like that. I really like that. We can put it in our remote hunting plots. Again, as long as it gets sun and it's got decent soil, and then just forget about it for a month before you want to go hunting. Hey, everybody. I just wanted to jump in here quick and talk about the newest thing that we're doing here at Northwoods Whitetails. It's called Field of Greens Podcast. It's on Spotify. Uh, Apple Podcasts, all major podcast hosting platforms. Again, Field of Greens podcast presented by Northwoods Whitetails. Check it out. The other thing I like about this when you're doing these hunting plots or even the big food plots, it's easy to plant clover. Like right now, what I would do if I was starting a brand new plot, you could probably, a small hunting plot, you could probably go spray a couple of times and then seed right before a good rain as long as you don't have a thick thatch layer. Uh, on our main destination fields, uh, we're going to go add crimson clover to our soil builder blend when it warms up just a little bit more. You know, here in early May, it's soil temperature is still too cold for our soil builder. I know a lot of folks down south, south, south of us are starting to put soil builder blend in. They're adding crimson clover, they're getting that in the ground. Uh, that's where, you know, you're going to lightly disc the ground, get the soil builder planted, pack, and then you're going to overseed the crimson clover. That's a great annual clover for nitrogen building. In our soil builder blend but it's really easy to plant this clover if you're doing a clover blend clover blend plus chicory you can you know 50 pounds of oats as a nurse crop 
per acre and then you can do eight pounds an acre of our clover blend plus chicory or clover blend there it's it's fairly easy you know it's not um you know it's not like switchgrass where you're gonna do multiple springs and stuff like that but a lot of this can even be no tilled if you've got say what we did last week we've got a fall forage sandy soil the rice coming back we seeded right into that right before two good rains and i can start to see the clover starting to crack and pop already we're going to either go mow the rye or we're going to go spray clethodim and then just leave that thatch layer and then the clover is going to come up through that so if you've got a cereal grain coming back from last year's food plot you could probably seed right into that before. I know we got a lot of rain heading through the Midwest right now. We just had a big rain, uh, it ended about an hour ago. And so our, our planting timing was perfect, but it's very easy to do clover if you've got a well-prepared food plot. So in our opinion, uh, a perennial clover plot is something you need to have on your food plot program because of all season food. I, you know, we get asked a lot about that dough factory theory, summer food. I, I just think that's, it's just nonsense. I don't even, you know, we'll do a video on that some other time, but that's just, that's not even a thing. Um, I have no problem with having clover. Actually, we're increasing our perennial clover plots because something to think about, you know, it doesn't seem like it right now because of all the rain we're getting in the Midwest and, and in the South. Um, but, you know, we've been in dry drought conditions um, in the fall for the last three years. So we're kind of building up our perennial percentages on our land. So if we do run into a dry fall, a dry spell, we still have a lot of green food in our food plots in the form of clovers and clover chicory. So let's talk about the type of clovers we have here at Northwoods and their purposes. We have seven products here, you know, and one of them is just straight chicory, but we're gonna put that into the clover blend. Chicory is actually a forb. But what we're going to talk about is each and every single one of them. And they, they have their own purpose. But again, I wanna emphasize not like most other companies that just take all these clovers and shove them in a bag. We have them separated because I believe each and every one has a purpose and each and every one will not work on some grounds. They'll work on, you know, some, all of these might work on some grounds, but all of these won't work on other grounds. You know, when we talk about organic matter, low soil uh, organics, organic matter percentage, sandy soil, clay soil, uh, low rainfall, it's not going to work. Some of these just won't work. They're going to struggle. They're not going to taste good to the deer. And, you know, we get into that drought period in August, you know, they'll go dormant. They could die. So let's talk about these clover blend and then the clover blend plus chicory. This is the one that uh, we started back in 20, I think 2010, we built our first clover blend. And it's right now we're on four different varieties of white ladino clovers. And it's done quite well. There's different, you know, there's frost tolerant. We've got green clover blend here in, here in upper Michigan all the way into January. I really like this clover blend. Four different varieties, um, different growth heights, different leaf sizes. But there's no red in it. There's no coated seed. Uh, there's no annual clovers in it. When you buy a bag of Northwoods clover blend, it is four pounds of inoculated clover. You don't need to add inoculant to it. It's already done but it's 100% seed, you get four pounds of seed. I really like this clover blend. We've been planting it since 2010 and I've yet to find something better. Uh, the clover blend plus chicory is the art clover blend, but it's got 25% chicory added to it. Now I've been looking at, <clears throat> you know, I go to the stores, big box stores, you know, the big outdoor stores, heck even like tractor supply. And I look at chicory percentages, 2%, 3%. We've got 25%. I don't think there's, other than our seclusion blend, I don't think there's anybody selling a chicory that high percentage. You know, if you think about it, you plant an acre of clover blend, you got eight pounds, uh, 10 pounds, depending on where you're getting it from. You got one, two, maybe three percent chicory. <laughs> you're really not going to see any chicory. And like I talked before about this chicory, I really think it's such a strong fall attraction. You really want a high percentage of chicory. And we've got 25% chicory in our clover blend plus chicory. Now you go to our seclusion 360, it's 65% chicory, but it's got one variety of white clover that does much better in, and I hate to say crappier grounds, but it does much better in the crappier grounds than the clovers in the clover blend. It's a different clover, but it does extremely well. And like I said, I like these, the seclusion 360, I really like in all our hunting plots are now going 
the small kill pots, eighth acre, um, that, that particular size, as long as I can get decent sun to it, because these are a broadleaf, they're both broadleaf plants and they need their sun. As long as I have decent soil, good sun, I'm going to the Seclusion 360 because what we have seen in the last three years has just been outstanding results with it, especially that particular chicory. Now we also sell a red clover, that's a medium red, uh, the, the one that we found that we really like as far as it, you know the, the fast growth that it has in the fall. Usually we'll plant this here probably mid-August. We add it to our fall forage, we'll add it to our uh, green forage blend, and it will provide some attraction and some food in the fall but I'm really looking for it to come back right now. And I'm gonna take you out to our food plot here and we don't have warm weather right now. We had a couple of warm days, just got done with the rain and that red clover is, is starting to explode. There's deer in it every night and they're keeping it nipped down, but it's getting to the point now where we get some warm weather next week and some sun, it's gonna explode. And I am now feeding those deer right now. I'm gonna feed them all summer with this red clover, but the red clover also acts as a green manure for our brassica planting next year. Okay, I like the red, it's a biannual. Um, I also like the red when folks say, hey, and I'm, again, I'm gonna use Michigan, uh, northern half of Michigan is really sandy. They wanna start a clover program in the sandy ground. We don't have it mixed right now, but I'll take maybe eight pounds an acre of red clover. We might add two to three pounds an acre of chicory to it because it can handle sandy ground. It can head, handle drier conditions. I don't recommend our clover blend, clover blend plus chicory in that northern region, region until they get their organic matter percentage built. So if they want to start a clover program, <clears throat> excuse me, if they want to start a clover program, and again, it could be anywhere in the country, but you've got dry sandy conditions, low moisture capability, we'll do some red clover and we'll do some chicory. Okay, we're not going to use the whites just because the whites have a higher moisture need. So I use the reds as a plow down. It'll, it comes back in our cold winter, it'll, it'll winter well, it'll come back the following spring. Now crimson, and we'll get to that one in a minute, I usually don't use crimson as a green manure the following year. To, I, don't, I don't plant it in the fall in hopes of it to carry over. Now it probably would have survived this year in the winter because we had a very mild winter, but two, three, four years ago, none of our, our crimson survived up here. You know, you get, you get south of I-70, you should be able to carry crimson all year long. So if you didn't want to use the red clover uh, in say like our fall forge uh, or green forge blend in addition to that, you could have used crimson clover. So if you're looking for that to be a, a, a spring food, summer food, and then a winter, or I'm sorry, a fall plow down, if you're south by 70, you probably could use crimson clover. But now crimson, to me, I use, I treat crimson like brassim, Blanza, clover, annual clover, okay? It's gonna do some feeding, but I'm using it as a green manure because everything I've looked at of all the clovers, their nitrogen producing, their nitrogen building, crimson seems to do the best, produce the most nitrogen um, per acre over red and then over these whites. The other thing is, is if you're gonna use uh, clover as a plow down or addition to something like our soil builder, I really don't think you wanna be doing this because these are a lot more expensive than the red in the, in the crimson, and if you're gonna plow it down right away, that's just a lot of money you don't need to be spending. If you're using crimson as a plow down, um, you know, spring planted plow down, it's only been in the ground for like five or six months. This is pretty expensive to be doing that. Use the red or the crimson. Now another clover we have, we just started this two years ago, uh, wet ground clover. You know, you got swampy conditions. It's not gonna grow in standing water. You know, there's not much that's gonna grow, <laughs> maybe rice, but it can take wet ground, wet feet, better than anything else we've got on the shelf. It's a white variety of clover. It does really well. We've got a pond that we dug um, and then we took a, the, the, the diggings, spread it all around and we overseeded it with uh, our fall forage sandy soil. It did fairly well. But now what we did is we frost seeded this wet ground clover in there just because it's gonna have a tendency to flood. We had a lot of rain last night and I'm, go I'm sure if I went up there now it'd be underwater but this should survive those wet conditions. And then we also have, although it's, it's a forb, it's not a clover, chicory. We sell uh, two pound bags of chicory that if you wanted to overseed, we get a lot of questions right now, people asking if they can, uh, how can they overseed their clover blend with chicory? 
or they have clover or they have something they want to add chicory to it we do sell two palm bags of chicory like i said this is something that uh man i think we built this six years ago uh the seclusion blend and it's just amazing to watch the fall attractiveness and but i really like the regen it keeps coming back where if on these small food plots if we had brassicas or we had like i said the the green forage blend the beans and the peas man it'd get eaten to the ground quickly i really like this chicory that we've got here phenomenal addition to any clover plot now the one thing you're not going to see on the shelf here at northwoods seed coating we do not do that. We finally got rid of the last coated uh, clover seed in our blend. Uh, I think it was uh, 18 months ago. We really like the performance and how well this stuff grows, how quickly it grows, how well it germinates, the graze tolerance, the cold tolerance of the four clovers we have in our blend. But we had one that we really liked. And we could only get it coated. Well, we found a company that has it without coating. So we are now... We do have inoculant on it, but we don't have seed coating. So if you go to buy a bag of Northwoods clover, you get four pounds of seed. Okay. I was looking at a uh, bunch of different varieties. I'm seeing 35% coating. I'm seeing 38% coating. I saw one company who was, I don't know if boasting is the correct word, but they were emphasizing that they have the most clover in a bag compared to the, all the other competition, which is true, it's a five pound bag, but it, it's got 25% or 30% seed coating. So in reality, you're only getting 3.75 five pounds of seed. 3.75 pounds of seed in a five pound bag at a premium price because of seed coating. Okay, and I, I keep going back to this. This is a seed catalog from one of the biggest vendors in the country. And the, the, the coated seed is much cheaper than the uncoated seed. The other thing you won't find in our clover blends is annual clovers. Bersine clover is the number one clover for these seed companies. And again, here's that catalog. I'm looking at the price right now. Bersine, out of the, I don't know, 18 clovers that are there, Bersine clover is by far the cheapest. I saw a bag yesterday in Tractor Supply. Big buck on the bag, right on the bottom in big green letters, Bersim Clover. Folks, understand Bersim Clover, and if you don't believe me, go Google it. Go Google, look up Bersim Clover. It's a great annual clover. I use it a lot. We don't sell it here, but I use it a lot in our summer plow downs. It produces big, healthy leaves. It's got a lot of protein, okay? But it's an annual clover. One of the things we did last year as an experiment, uh, in, in, and I can, I'll take the camera up there the next time I'm up there. We talked, we showed you guys that Milo planting that we did last year. We overseeded that in rye in an annual clover. Guess what did not come back? There's no clover to be found. Same thing with our garden. We overseeded it in August with the annual clovers. Didn't come back this year. So you're getting the cheapest seed and a lot of these big buck seed companies, that's the highest percentage. It's like the one I was looking at was 30% seed coating in high 20s, low 30s percent Bersim Clover. So you buy a four pound bag and 60% of what you're paying for, you're not going to see that in 2025. But we don't do that, okay? I, I just think that's wrong. Or if you're, tell, if you're selling it, just tell people, guess what? You're paying, you know, I don't know. 10, 15 bucks a pound for this clover blend and it's the cheapest there is and it's not going to come back. I like, you know, and we'll take you out to our, our food plot behind the house here. There's a time and a place for annual clovers like Blonza, Bersim, Crimson, but lumped all together in a clover blend for a premium price, in my opinion, that's not the time nor the place for these annual clovers. And I think we, you know, there's a saying that you, you get a lot of flack when you're over the target. We talked about this, I think, a month, a month and a half ago. And oh my God, some of the pro staffers for some of these seed companies lost their mind. You know what you're talking about? You want annual clovers, blah, blah, blah. No, you don't. I mean, seriously, ask yourself that. Bersim clover is the cheapest clover I could buy, okay? It's right there. Does that do you folks any good by throwing a bunch of Bersim clover into our clover blend and charging the same price 
No, it doesn't do you any good. It does us great. It'd be great for us. We'd make more money. But it, I mean, at some point, <laughs> golden rule, treat others the way you want to be treated. And I, I would not want that in my clover blend. And there's some of the biggest names in the seed industry are doing that. Not only Bersim, but coated Bersim. The cheapest seed there is, coated Bersim clover. Go look at the seed labels. If you see Bersim and you see coated, put it down, walk away, go to the internet, order Northwoods White Tails Clover Blender, Clover Blend Plus Chicory. We do not do that. I think that's, I think that's just wrong. That's my opinion. Okay, so you won't find seed coating in our clover blends. You will not find annual clovers in our clover blends. There's a time and a place for these different clovers, but all in the same bag. We've been doing this a long time. Not the time or the place for them all to be in the same bag. So let's go outside. I'm going to uh, show you our food plot behind the house. It's just starting to green up. In each of the three strips, in, there will be clovers involved. Again, different clovers, different time different place okay we're going to show you how we use uh the different clovers here right in our backyard food plot and see our hd screen after a long hard winter a lot of it's still standing it got beat up pretty good but it's still standing compared to oh the rabbit habitat <laughs> right there we'll do another video on that in another time but let's talk about clovers so you can see the strip right here here's the line right here this is all red clover that we added with our fall forage and there's no rye growing, maybe a little bit back over here because the deer are in here every night eating it. There's a little bit of rye here. Now this is where brassicas were and we overseeded with uh, cereal rye just because they were eating it so fast. And the other thing is that was the second year on the food plot and the brassicas were struggling a little bit. We haven't got that soil uh, fixed yet. And then we've got the white clover chicory strip down here. So. We've got three different spots where we're going to use three different clovers. Obviously, clover blend plus chicory here, red clover here, and then here we're going to do our soil builder blend with crimson clover. So there's a reason why we use these clovers, and each clover has its purpose, but they don't belong in the same bag, in our opinion. This red clover is going to feed the deer all spring and summer, as well as last fall, and then it's going to become nitrogen when we plow it under for brassicas. This crimson clover is gonna be here probably Memorial weekend. That's an annual here up in upper Michigan because it's not gonna winter very well. And that's got its purpose. It's gonna be a nitrogen builder with our soil builder blend. And then we've got our clover blend, clover blend plus chicory down here, right up against the woods. Three different varieties of clovers, three different purposes, not all in the same bag. The other thing I want you to look at, <clears throat> now we talked about in our soil builder video, we just got done with, man, an inch of rain. Very little standing water. There's a little bit of standing water right behind me, but it just got done raining. And it's the water, and you can see there's a slope to this food plot. I don't know if it's hard to see with the video, but there's not a lot of standing water. There definitely isn't any erosion. So I, I really like this three strip planting method. But today we're talking about clovers, three different strips, three different clovers, each has a different purpose. Man, with some sun, that food plot is really gonna take off. We've had a lot of rain uh, the last 24, 48 hours. Soil temperature has dropped. Once the sun comes out, that soil temperature gets up, that red, that red clover is going to just explode. It's gonna be a great food source all spring, all summer, and it's gonna be a great plow down. We get some warm soil temperatures. We're going to lightly till where that brassica was. We're going to do our soil builder with crimson clover as a nitrogen builder in the summer food. And then again, you saw the clover blend plus chicory. Three different strips, three different clover types, three different needs. It's not all the same thing. That is our belief. It uh, benefits you folks to do some research. Hopefully this video will help you do some research and understand. You know, I took a walk through these big box stores and outdoor sporting goods companies and I just shake my head at what some of these companies are, are asking you to buy as clover blends, what you're paying and what you're getting. Folks, bottom line is we're trying to help you make sound decisions with these videos. You know, like I've said before, we don't get paid to do this. We don't get paid to do the podcast. And we're just trying to inform you on our products, what you want to look for, 
what you want to avoid again annual clovers and seed coating very heavy in some of these big buck seed companies i just don't think is the way to go um we just want you to make great decisions be informed you know things are getting more and more expensive and we don't feel you need to be wasting your money on food plot seed that's not going to perform in your situation so if you've got any questions by all means ask them in the comments below uh, if you want to get a hold of us uh, email you can message us uh, through private messenger on Facebook. You can get a hold of us, text message us through the website. We've got a new, um, I don't even know what it's called. Uh, not an app, but there's, there's, a, there's a little text to Northwoods uh, in the corner of our website. You can uh, text us there and it comes right to our phone. So a lot of ways to get a hold of us. We're trying to answer all the questions as best we can. Hopefully this video helps. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for the unbelievable spring we've had so far if you purchase Northwoods products. Thank you so much, folks, and we'll see you in a few days.